my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and the videos you're about to undertake are nothing to do with gas they well basically what it is is how houses are built in the UK particular house my wife's house so my wife has purchased a house and this is the process of it being built so hope you enjoy it let's just get on with it today is sunday the first of march and it's not raining it's actually not raining in manchester for a change but today is a bit of a exciting day for us today in our new build house because today we're going to pick our options so two weeks ago there was just a hole in the ground for our new build house but now there's walls and even a roof and it's a tiled roof so we've got to go to the sales place today to pick our options for what we want in Oops, a bit muddy our new build house so while i take them up for a walk let's have a look at the history of the place where our house is being built and have a look at the stages so far so let's get on with it so the house we have bought is on the old i grammar site on Clarendon Road in Hyde in Cheshire. So this is the site as you can see this is looking down Clarendon Road and this is the police station. So the house we have actually bought is this white one down here with the scaffold around it. So this is Clarendon Road looking around Clarendon Road and let's go back into time to actually see what it was like before the housing estate was built. So again, Clarendon Road all the way around. And this is where our house is going to be. So you can see the old sports hall. So originally, uh, the school was called the New County School for Boys. The building was built at the cost of £12,000. It was opened on September the 17th, 1912 by Sir George Dixon. He was the chairman of the county council. Large extensions to the building were then made and in 1929 the school reopened as Hyde County Grammar School for Boys. It then closed its doors to 11 year olds in 1979 and became Hyde Sixth Form College. It later merged with Ashton Sixth Form College to form Tameside College which is now known as High Clarendon College. In October 2015, the college relocated to a new building in ashton on the Town Centre and the site on Clarendon Road in High Cheshire became empty. On the 27th of August 2018, demolition started on the 6.77 acre site for 96 new homes which were going to be built by the building company Taylor Wimpy. The new housing estate has got a new name change of Clarendon Woods and offers a range of three and four bedroom houses with a selection of semi-detached and detached style homes. To celebrate the old site, Taylor Wimpy have named all the streets after the old houses from the old college such as Chapman Avenue, Garden Close and we are going to be living on Brownson Close. So this is the view looking down Brownson Close at our house and the house we bought is the Kentdale which is a four bedroom detached house with a total square meterage of 113.53 which is 1222 square feet. So what we're looking at here is actually going to be the back of the house. So the door you can see here would technically be our back door, but it's not really the back door, it's looking at the side of the house. Because um, the way the house is um, facing, it's actually the front of the house is facing the park. So we get better views from the front. 
So this is the house next door and you can see the foundations to next door. So, so we're not really facing next door. That's why it's the back is the side. Anyway, <laughs> the door you can see here, uh, the double doors are actually the patio doors and this is facing our back garden. So this, what we're looking at now is technically the side and the front of the house, but our back garden is here. So if we walk down here now, we're now passing the front of the house. So the living room window is the one on the ground floor on the left hand side. Then it's the front door. Then it's the um, dining room. So the ground floor we're looking at is the, uh, the dining room and the kitchen with two bedrooms above. So front and back bedrooms above. If we uh, look up, this is the road running parallel to the left now, running parallel with the park. So this is the main road which will go past the front of our house towards the other two houses at the side. So let's have a look inside. So this is our living room facing the patio doors and then this is looking into the door to get out of the living room. Going to the door which leads out to where the front door is. Right in front of us is where the downstairs loo is. And that's the view outside from our front door. So looking back now, this is where the staircase is going to be. And the door you can see is the door which is the side door. Which is going to be the utility room. So if we come in now, this on the left hand side now is the kitchen. So all the units are going on this back wall and that is the dining room at the other end. So this is a few days later, we've got a roof. So they just started to slate the roof, so it's uh, starting to make it watertight. So we've had some horrendous weather in February in Manchester. So the sooner they get the roof on the better. And this is the view inside now, uh, upstairs. So this is so they can put the roof on, this is a temporary scaffolding. Well that's Charlotte. And um, this is me. So we turned up on site today and we have windows. Yes, nice surprise today that when we turned up on site, we've got windows. We've got windows in the side of the house. We've got windows in the front of the house. We haven't got a front door yet. And we've got windows and a patio door at the side. So before we go into the house and see what the changes are there, let's just talk about the structure and how the house is being built so far. Now the ground floor is technically a concrete slab, but it's the beams from block and beam, but instead of having the block in between, it's got insulation. So you can see the insulation here is quite thick. And then what they've done is they've uh, concreted over the top of all this to create the slab for the ground floor. So 
Now, as you can see, our house is actually a timber frame house. So what does that mean? Well, basically, we have an outer skin of brick, and then all the internal walls, all the structure and the load-bearing walls are all made of wood. Um, and then they're cladded with OSB board. OSB stands for Orientated uh, Stranded Board, which was invented in the USA in 1963, and it's basically strands of wood glued together. The OSB is then glued and nailed to the 4x2 treated studs to create the external walls of the structure. The silver coating you can see all over the structure is actually a vapour barrier and this vapour barrier stops moisture getting into the timber frame. There is also going to be a vapour barrier on the inside to stop the moisture from the inside the house getting into the timber frame. Let's have a look at the windows as soon as we've got some. Now the windows as you can see are all UPVC double glazed. They're actually fixed into the wooden um, structure by foam and brackets. So you can see the brackets are screwed into the, the frame. There is also a wooden frame running right round the outside of the, the window. And I guess this is where the brickies will brick up to because this is about the thickness of the cavity. So the bricks will go straight up to the end of this and this is how the windows will be secured in. Now while we're talking about bricks, so this is the first part of the bricking up. And as you can see it's just a single skim with a very thin, well very small cavity. Now this cavity cannot have any insulation inside there whatsoever. But you can actually see the bricks are tied into the actual um, walls with these little ties. Well, let's get through the front door and have a look and see what's happening inside. Oh, we have stairs, we have stairs. Last time we was here, we had scaffolding upstairs. So we couldn't even get up there because we didn't have any stairs. So let's go and have a look, see what we've got. Now, first time me going up our brand new stairs. Obviously, I'm not the first person to go up the stairs, but I'm the first one in our family to go up the stairs. So let's have a look and see what's happening up here. So that's the bathroom straight in front of us. We'll have a look at that again in a minute. So first bedroom we come to is this one here which is actually going to be Charlotte's dressing room. It's class as bedroom four, but we're having it all decked out in wardrobes just so Charlotte can have somewhere for his shoes. So you can see back, that's our, actually our bedroom there. So uh, let's go back through the door and have a look at the master bedroom. So back onto the landing. This is our master bedroom. This is our ensuite, so what's going to be our ensuite? So, back out now. Little cupboard you can see there is where our invented cylinder is going to be. And this is our main bathroom. This is our guest room, or bedroom number three. And uh, we'll have a look at little Will's bedroom. So this is gonna be stepson William's bedroom. No doubt he'll be spending most of his life in this room. So let's finish off on the structure. So you can see the internal stud walls uh, are all 3b2. And let's have a look and see how the roof's done. So the roof is prefabricated again off site. Um, and then it's craned on to make it easier to build. 
Then they put another vapor barrier on top. And then it's latted. And then it's tiled. So we've got tiles on top of the roof. So that is the roof structure. Now the next thing we're going to be looking at in this build is the plumbing. So this part we're looking at now is where the boiler is going to be installed in the kitchen. So the plastic pipe you can see here are actually the flow and return pipes from the boiler. And this is the route they have to take to get to where the cylinder is, which is upstairs near the bathroom. So we've just gone through the dining room. This is the downstairs loo or cluck room where it's passing through. As you can see it's coming through there. And then it splits and goes upstairs to the airing cupboard. So in the airing cupboard is going to be kind of the control centre where all the zone valves, the pump's going to be and the unvented cylinder which is in this room and it's all going to be distributed from here. Now the plumbing system they've chosen is actually called HEP2O, made by Hepworth, and it's available in either standard or barrier pipes. So standard pipe would be used for hot and cold water, and the barrier pipe would be used for central heating. So the reason they use the barrier pipe is to stop air ingress. So the pipe is made from polybutylene. HEP2O barrier pipe has a layer of ethylene vinyl alcohol that prevents oxygen diffusion through the pipe wall when used on this central heating system or underfloor heating systems. Now this pipework system has a guarantee of 50 years and it comes in 10, 15, 22 and 28 millimeter sizes. Now to secure the system we need what's called an insert. So this insert goes into the center of the pipe. What the insert does is when you push it into the fitting, it actually stops one the pipe crushing and also when you twist it, it actually clicks into the end of the fitting. So you need a special key to be able to remove this fitting. So this key just slides over the end, pushes in this little clip at the end and you can remove the pipe. Without this little tool, you can't remove the pipe. And you can see there that we've actually got the barrier pipe there. So these fittings are quick and easy to use. They're secure and tamper proof because you need the key to remove them. And they're in white, so they're dead easy to use. HEP2O is kite marked to class S of BS7291 parts one and two. And the pipe and fittings are manufactured to the quality, quality management system that satisfies BS EN ISO 9002. Now you've been seeing that the pipe work has been passing through the floor joists. So the floor joists what are used here is engineered wood. So it's more commonly known as the eye joist. It is a product that is designed to eliminate problems that occur with the conventional wood joists, such as twisting and bending. It was invented in 1969 and the eye joist is an engineered wood product that has great strength in relationship to its size and its weight. And you can see here that the pipe is actually going through the centre of the joist. Even the soil pipe is going through this bit of an eye joist. <laughs> so you can see these plastic pipes uh, are snaking their way through the floor joists. So they're hot and cold water systems of the 15 mil. We've got the central eating is in the 22 mil pipe. And the smaller 10 mil pipes you can see here are what's coming off the heating system and feeding the radiators. Now this copper pipe you can see on the right hand side is what's going over to feed the gas to the boiler. And this uh, pipe you can see here is the cold water mains coming in which is MDPE pipe. MDPE stands for medium density polyethylene. Now because this is a timber framed house you can see here that the actual gas pipe coming from outside has been encased in its own purpose made duct. This duct stops any gas which could escape if there was a leak from actually going into the wooden structure and causing an explosion because nobody would be able to smell it. Now because this is a brand new build the building regs say that all baths now have to be fitted with blending valves. 
So the pipe configuration you can see there is for the blending valve to stop the bath going over 48 degrees. Now this is a shower in the ensuite and the shower in the ensuite will also be temperature controlled to stop the water going over this 48 degrees. But it will, the thermostat will be incorporated within the shower. What you can see here is the hot and cold water and the drainage for the toilet and wash basin in the ensuite. And this piece of plywood you can see here with the pipe sticking out is the support for the brackets for the radiator. This is also a support but this time it's a support for the consumer unit for the electrics. And this is how they've secured all the electrical sockets and switches to the wall before it's plastered. And that is the end of this video. So, if you like this video, why don't you give us a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then get subscribing. But don't forget to hit that notification bell because we release videos every Wednesday. So, all I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, thanks for your time. And tune in next Wednesday for part two on these videos on how a house is built in the UK. Cheers guys!